Heavenly Father, we give you praise, O oh God, and we give you glory, and we give you honor, and we give you power, and we give you majesty and dominion, O oh God, and we exalt you, and we glorify, and we magnify your name, because your name is high and exalted, O oh God. We lift your name on high, O oh God, because you're sovereign, and you're holy, and you're righteous, and you're just, O oh God, and you're worthy to be praised, O oh God. And we're here this morning, O oh God, just to bring glory to your name, O oh God. We give you praise, O oh God, that you have found it pleasing this morning to be among us, O oh God. We give you praise, O oh God, that you consider us your children, O oh God. And this morning we just bow, O oh God, in your awesome presence. And O oh God, even now, O oh God, humble me, O oh God, O oh Lord Jesus, and let your name alone be exalted. My God, and let your word, my God, go forth without hindrance, O oh God. And let the hearts of your people be truly blessed. Oh God, we give your praise, oh God, and we give your glory. Have your way in this place, oh God. Have your way. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And amen. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Habakkuk 1, verse 5. And the prophet says, verse 1, sorry. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? Even cry out to you violence and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? And plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention. Therefore the law is powerless, and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, therefore perverse judgment proceeds. And I'm going to go to Habakkuk 2, because God had a word for the prophet when he went to God about all his woes and everything that seemed like it was going wrong. And he was asking God, how long? And he said, I will stand my watch and hear what God has to say. And in Habakkuk 2, verse 2 to 4, the Lord said to him, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie, though it tarries. Wait for it. Because it will surely come. Yeah. It will not tarry. Yeah. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him. But the just yes. shall live by faith. By faith. Yes. Hmm. The spoken word. <laughs> Get ready. Uh, uh, uh. My God. I got a lot more Get ready for your season of uncommon favor. Now, every person in firstborn ministry of God should be shouting me off this stage because of what God has just done in our midst and has now confirmed it with the word. It means it's extraordinary. And God is telling 
comes down and the snow from heaven and does not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to yes. the eater. Yes. So shall my word go forth, mm. go forth and accomplish. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. So God. shall my word glory, glory, glory. go forth from my mouth. It shall not return. Yes, it shall not return. <gasps> Come 
come on, favor. You see favor? You see when man favor you? It's something, right? But you see when Jehovah God, he who created all things, he who spoke the world into existence, he who speaks and nobody can ask him what he has done, he who guides the hearts of king as he guides the water in the water brook, he who rained manna from heaven to feed his people when he was in the wilderness, we're talking about Jehovah God and when he says that he's going to show you one common favor, you have to receive it. Be excited. Oh, you should be running out of this place like you lose your mind because God, Jehovah God, has just told me that I am going to experience. I am going to experience. Experience a season of uncommon favor. Psalms 37, 23 to 25 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by God, and he delight in the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him in his hand. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And as we step into 2020, we're going to experience uncommon favor because we're going to be laden, 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 laden. Him in a pit, thought that was it, and God saved him 
And you know what I love about the account? We all know what happened with Joseph. But I want, I want you guys to look at what happened when he was sold into slavery and in Potiphar's house. Joseph was a slave. A slave is not somebody who's free. But here, what the word of God said, as Joseph was in Potiphar's house as a slave, the Lord made Joseph successful. The Lord made all that he did prosper. Joseph found favor in the sight of his master. He became overseer over all what his master has. And the Lord blessed the Egyptian house yes, for the sake of Joseph. Now if that's not uncommon favor, uh -huh. what you call that? This man was a slave, but yet he became head slave? Uh -huh. That sounds like rubbish. Uh -huh. He became head slave in a foreign land where he did not speak their language uh -huh. and the Lord was with him. So you see, that's what I'm telling you. No matter where you find yourself in 2020, God is not limited to your circumstances. God is above every circumstance. So wherever you find yourself here or now, mm. favor of the Lord will show up. Yes. It showed up with Joseph as he was a slave. And we know what happened and he got thrown into prison. And I got to show you again because as I was looking at the word, I said, God, you're not easy. Mm. We don't have to worry about where we find ourselves. As long as the presence of God, you're Hear what the word of God said. And the Lord was with Joseph. Not leaving. The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord showed him mercy. The Lord gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. The keeper of the prison committed all in Joseph's hands. Whatever Joseph did, God made. You see the pattern? I don't want you to miss. I don't want you to miss the pattern. That no matter where Joseph found himself, God was right there with him. That's what it says in Psalm 139. Where can I go from your presence? Or where can I flee from your spirit? If I make my bed in hell, you're going to be there. No matter where we go, God is going to show up. And no matter where, what we do, he said you're going to be head. He was a slave and he was a head slave. He was a prisoner and he was a head prisoner. Because whenever you, God is with you. And if God is for you, nothing, no circumstance, no situation, nothing can be against you. You just have to believe and receive the God that you serve. Because we see it in the life of Joseph. That even though on his journey to his destination, he, he came up against things and people and circumstances, God's presence was still with him and he still experienced the favor and the blessing of Almighty God. And because of the favor and blessing of God that was upon his life, all around him experienced the same. Let's see. Yes, Lord. Do you understand why we are a peculiar people? A royal priesthood. Yes, Lord. A holy nation. Hallelujah. My God, we've been called out of darkness into a marvelous light. Oh God, we are the people of God. Chosen people of God. So when God said to get rid be ready. Come. Be ready. Because God is going to do a thing for his people. God is going to do a thing that when it's done, we see it, what he did with Joseph. When it was done, a Hebrew foreigner became assistant king. That is not common. Uncommon. That is very uncommon and impossible. Yes. Yes. 
Because how could a Hebrew slave slash prisoner become assistant king? He was the highest authority in Egypt next to the king. That's what God did. God ushered Joseph into a season of uncommon favor. And because of that, everyone in Egypt was blessed. His family that sold him out <laughs> were blessed. Ah! Ah! His family that tried to kill him received the blessings of God. God's uncommon favor. Saints of God, receive the word of God. Receive what God has said that he has done. And in closing, I'm going to use Joel 2, 25 to 29, because God says, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts has eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts. My great army which I have sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my maidservants and my, my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And Ephesians 3, 20 to 21 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Father God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. And Lord, we honor you and we bow before you because you are truly God. And there is no other God. We worship you, O oh God. And we magnify your holy name. We thank you, God, for everything that you have said and done in our midst this morning. And Father God, with our whole hearts, we receive what you have said. Let your word go forth without hindrance. Let every unbelieving spirit now be cancelled by the blood of Jesus Christ so that your children can receive what you have said and what you have done. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Yeah.